Good evening. Um, today is November the 5th, 2019. Our thought for today is America's veterans um, embody the idea upon which America was founded. That's by Steve Byers. I want to go ahead and officially um, call the meeting to order tonight. Uh, thank you guys for being here tonight. Uh, thank you for caring about uh, your community um, enough to be here tonight. Uh, tonight we have a, a, a familiar face uh, with us tonight, um, Brother Bill McAvain. Uh, sir, if you would, please come. Um, he is the pastor of the church, the Covington Church of Christ. Um, sir, we're excited about you being here tonight. Uh, Mr. McAvain is um, um, one who, the one who put in our sound system, so we really appreciate you being here. Thank you for what you do uh, for our community. If you would, pr please tell us a little bit about yourself, um, your ministry, and please um, pray, pray for our community. I want to also mention tonight that uh, Commissioner Cowan's mother-in-law passed. Um, what's, what's her name again? Miss Barbara Mitchell. Um, if you would, please uh, lift their family in prayer as well. Thank you. Well, all right. Yes, My sir. name is Bill McElvain. Mm -hmm. I moved up here in 2004. We were in Florida for since 1990 to 2004. I was working with a church down there on a part-time basis, and uh, I was also working at NASA. And moved up this way because uh, my son and his family live up this way, and so we want to be closer to family. So um, I took a position with the Church of Christ, I'm primarily the one who takes care of all the teaching, um, curriculum, etc., and I do a lot of the preaching as well. And so, uh, as most of you know, I have a business, and uh, that's my tent making, just like Paul made tents. I make computers. <laughs> so, <clears throat> that's how I got here. Amen, amen. So, let's go ahead and go to Heavenly Father in prayer. Thank you. Our dear Lord and our Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening so thankful for all the things that you have provided for us. You have given us so much. We're all here as a product of your love and your grace and your providence. We have the ability to be here, so our health is better than many, many who have no health. We are told this evening that we have one of our council members who has, has a loss in their family. And Lord, we ask you that you would please be with that family, comfort them in a way that only you can. And we hope, Lord, that all things will turn out for the better. Lord, we come to you this evening because first and foremost, we live in a wonderful country that you have given to us. We have our freedoms. We have so many things that we take for granted sometimes. And Lord, we also would like to take this time to thank those who have served us and served us well in, in prior years and even now. And so for those who have served in the military, for those who have served as first responders even here, Lord, we're so thankful that we have those who have dedicated their lives to our service. And we pray, Father, that we'll never take those things for granted. Lord, we realize that there's only two constants in this world. And the first one is being you. You never change. And that gives us confidence and gives us hope. And the second constant, the second constant in this world is, is that everything else changes. And so, Lord, as we try to deal with the constant changes in our personal lives, in our families, in our community, we pray, Father, that you would please be with our council members this evening and, and give them the wisdom to make the right decisions. There are so many things that change, and we have to learn to adapt with them. And we pray, Father, that you will help us and have the patience to be mindful of sometimes that change is not always easy to accept. We ask you, Lord, that you would give us an, an idea of just how much it is that we have that you have given to us. We realize that every penny in our pocket actually is not ours. It comes from you. And you have given us the ability to be stewards of that money. And Lord, we pray, Father, for those who are looking towards our tax revenue and the decisions that they have to make. We pray, Father, that we will all be responsible stewards and help us, Father, as we are in the community to 
realize that it's not always an easy thing to say yes and sometimes to say no to some things that are just not appropriate or good for us. And we pray, Father, that everything that we do will be pleasing in your sight. As far as we have in our power, we pray that we can live peaceably with all men. Help us always to remember just who we are and what we are striving to do. And someday, Lord, it's our hope that we can stand before you and hear you say to us, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joys of the kingdom. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. And amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, sir, uh, Brother Bill, for being here tonight. I, I got a small token that I want to leave with you, sir, if you would. Again, thank you for being here tonight. Thank you um, for what you do in our community. Uh, we greatly appreciate you. And I have a token of appreciation for you. have anyone that have served uh, in the armed forces here tonight? Sir, if you would, would you please come and lead us in our pledge, please? Thank you. If you will lead us off, we will all stand in. I pledge allegiance to the flag for the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your service as well. <clears throat> Next on the agenda is uh, the agenda adoption. Um, if there are no changes, I seek a motion that we approve the agenda. It's been motioned by Commissioner Schultz and, and second by Commissioner Mason. Any discussion? All in favor? It passes 4-0. Thank you. Next on the agenda is citizens' comments. This is the opportunity that we allow citizens to come up and uh, make comments about agenda topics only. Agenda topics only. You may come at this time. You have three minutes to do so. Please state your name, your address for the record, please. Agenda topic only. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Chairman. Good evening. Commissioners and Mr. Lloyd. Fine evening to all of you. My name is Gladstone Nicholson. Okay, I forget Miss Jackie. Find even Jackie, a no, distinguished lawyer. In any case, my name is Gladstone Nichols. I live at 495 Lakeside Circle here on the west side of the county. And I have a couple comments tonight. So I'll get some good, some maybe need some work. But uh, let me get the good ones out first. First of all, I thank you, commissioners for your work and to the sheriff as well to get the West Side Precinct up and running to make it a long-awaited reality. Thank you all. And I also want to thank you for the retreat agenda that I've seen. I probably won't be able to make it, unfortunately, but I like the transparency that you set it out in, in, with enough advanced time so folks might get familiar with it and maybe make some uh, changes in their schedule to be able to come and Sit in for a few minutes. Now, that's that. Now, the other parts I had that concerns the agenda for tonight. And just some questions I want to ask, and maybe you've thought about them already, perhaps. You have. I'm sure I'm not that smart that you haven't. But um, first thing is the Covington Newton Industrial Park. I don't, I've, I've, I have an idea where it is over there by um, 
142. But I'm just wondering, why was this property sold in the first place and when was it sold? And what's the price? What was the price then and what is it now? You know, we've heard different things about the county transferring properties and retransferring it in other cases. And I'm not sure what that's symptomatic of, but I'm not sure if it's something that we ought to be doing um, with any kind of regularity. The second thing is uh, in District 2, that Brown Bridge and Magnet Road turnaround. Um, I don't go on Brown Bridge Road uh, very often, and I'm sure obviously the traffic volume has picked up over there. But I'm just wondering, um, was this run about uh, determined to be a necessity based on a traffic count or what was done to, in order to justify its being done. I know we're planning to widen the Brown Bridge Road down the road in the future. I'm just wondering if this might be just a counterproductive expenditure at this time. That's all. And lastly, we're talking about the brick store overlay over there on the East Coast. East Coast, forgive me. The <laughs> Highway 11. I'm just wondering that uh, I think that uh, mod uh, modification 00003, is it, is it in fact in the big store overlay? And secondly, uh, if it is, we ought to be a little bit uh, weary of making too many uh, changes to what we've set up as overlay plans. And so my time is out, so thank yes, you. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Anyone else? Thank you. Our next is old business. Um, okay. Well, we're gonna we're gonna skip old business. We're gonna go down to um, the chairman's report. Um, I don't really have anything. I'm gonna let uh, Mr. Kerr do, do the county manager report. Sir, if you will, we'll come back to um, item number six at 730. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do have a few things on the uh, report that I wanted to mention to uh, you all. One is uh, to begin with, with animal services. Um, we've been conducting weekly adoptions at PetSense, and this has been a very successful program for us and uh, continues to be. So we are anticipating um, that is going to be a very successful program and will continue to do so. Um, the, um, at the, in the elections office, um, during the past month, the month of October, um, the office received and processed over 1,600 uh, applications for voter registration. So um, this is in addition to the already 70 plus thousand uh, active um, voter uh, registrations that that we have and of course today as everyone knows is the city elections in the county so and our elections office is assisting the city of Covington with their uh, election um, we have uh, begun working on the hazard mitigation plan update last month uh, you all approved a contract um, for that uh, to begin uh, happening and we already have um, started work on that. The fire department is uh, beginning to do some of their training online. Um, this is a new program that we're just starting with this with this fiscal year uh, and this will allow the uh, gives us an opportunity for the trainees and for um, the current members of the fire department to do continuing education um, uh, at their own pace and uh, also uh, can be done. It makes the scheduling of those programs easier um, and they're more able to work around their, ske their um, uh, schedules, their work schedules. October was fire safety month and our fire safety education department um, spent a lot of time out in the county um, at various um, civic organizations as well as particularly with the schools and uh, over at the senior center doing fire education programs. Um, GIS has been working with uh, the uh, one of the GDOT contractors um, 
uh, at uh, who will be doing the work at uh, Highway 11 and 142 for the um, roundabout that is soon to begin uh, there. Um, also, uh, they have been diligently working with the uh, uh, Census Complete Count Committee, and um, there have been a little over 1,200 households uh, that were added um, to the data for the Census Bureau. Um, and these were households that have been constructed since uh, 2018. And um, we're almost a thousand of those are located in the unincorporated part of the county. So um, we are working very hard to make sure that we do get a complete and accurate count um, because it does have significant impact on our uh, ability to obtain federal funding. Um, IT has been working with the uh, DA's office and we're now in the process of deploying a new um, computer system for the DA's office which should help them uh, in accessing um, the information that they need whenever they're doing research and so forth. Um, the um, uh, KNB, Keep uh, Newton Beautiful, has begun their um, puppet shows that they do annually at the uh, school school system. And uh, so if you have kids in the elementary schools, they may be talking to you about that. Um, Seymour Green is the uh, star of the show and um, he uh, does a, a lot of, gives the kids a lot of information about protecting our waterways and also recycling. Um, the Water First uh, workshop, um, at the Water First workshop in Byron, Georgia, um, uh, Lori uh, Riley gave a presentation um, on October the 8th um, and so um, uh, also to raise the, um, the uh, uh, interest in uh, protecting all of the waterways within the state. The dog park that's been that was constructed over at uh, Turner Lake will be officially open on the, the 14th of November so we want to make sure everybody's aware of that and you can bring your animals out to the new dog park there. We do have one over behind the library, but this is also for, uh, but the one at the uh, Turner Lake, this makes it more convenient for the people on the west side of the county to come. Um, and uh, one of the things that the recreation uh, department has been doing is movie night. And um, the last movie night they had was on the, the, um, the 18th. Also, uh, I'd like to mention that we now have launched our um, finance department um, transparency page um, and there's a link directly to that page from the transparency uh, if you go to the home page and you'll see a title uh, for transparency um, and it if you click on that then it'll give you a link directly to the to the finance page um, and that will give you all of our financial documents um, and uh, give you access to anything that we do over there, our budgets, our check registers, and so forth. Um, and uh, Mr. Fazio is going to bring that up, I think. Open finance, there it is. You'll see open finance transparency tool. You can see our budgets. Under the explore button is where you'll get more information. Um, and you can click on those um, and uh, it'll give you um, <coughs> how, well, you can see there, it's how the general fund has been broken down by function, what percentage of the budget goes where, and then the dollar percent, the dollar breakout, and so forth. Um, so this is a good tool for everybody who wants to know what's going on financially in the county. This is an excellent and an easy place for you to find. Um, also, we have had uh, 1,643 uh, page views on Facebook, and um, during the last month, we had 14,344 visitors to um, our um, to the Insta I guess it's Inst Instagram, um, and 31,000 page views to the website um, total. Uh, so, a lot of folks taking a look at what we're doing. The road stewards program, which is the pavement assessment, is 100% uh, complete. Now our transportation engineers are doing an analysis 
on the data that they found to work in uh, so that we can utilize that data when we prioritize paving uh, work. Um, the signal, Flat Shoals and Covington Bypass, the signals being installed there. Um, you'll have also seen that the signals down at 36 in the bypass, which was actually a state project, but uh, the mast arms and all are in there for, um, for that. We've hired a contractor to do road striping throughout the, the county, um, the areas that were not done uh, in the last year or so. Um, senior services had about 250 people in attendance at their Voices of Wisdom uh, uh, presentation over at the um, Port of Performing Arts uh, back at the end of September. A spa day was hosted for the seniors on October 17th, and there was a, a senior uh, forum um, that was hosted uh, on October the, I believe it was the 22nd. Um, and uh, Grandparents Fest and Senior Expo was held on the 20, on the uh, 25th of October. Um, something that's coming up, uh, two things. One is uh, there will be um, representatives uh, there at the Senior Center on November 15th from the <coughs> LHEAP program, um, which is a program that gives, provides assistance to seniors to assist in paying monthly utility bills, and that assistance could be up to $250. And also on November uh, 18th, um, the seniors along with the sheriff's uh, office will be giving out fresh fruit and vegetables to seniors in the community. Um, we'll be holding a water region uh, summit on uh, actually tomorrow, which includes Walton County, Social Circle, Newton County, uh, City of Covington and City of Monroe. And that'll be uh, going on tomorrow. And with that, uh, that concludes the manager's report. Um, I would like to remind everyone that we will be, of course, we'll have our um, retreat on Thursday and Friday at um, uh, over at the uh, Oxford College. So. Oh, um, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, I didn't. The uh, West Side Precinct will have an official uh, ground uh, uh, opening on uh, Thursday morning at 10:30. Everyone's invited to come there. Um, no, oops, I'm sorry, uh, I misspoke. At 11. At, at 11. Yep. I, I apologize. Thank you, Sheriff. It's at uh, 11. Um, so, I would like to have everyone there. This is a really a great addition to the community and will help to provide much needed um, services and much needed presence over there. And this is a multi-use building. It's not just the sheriff's office. There's um, uh, available tax commissioner will have people there as well as the uh, assessor's office and there's a community room. Um, so it um, <coughs> would be a great addition uh, to the county. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you sir. Um, also, we have two minutes. so. I'm gonna throw this out there also. Um, the, uh, the rec department had a fall festival as well. And man, I tell you, they had tons and tons of people uh, to show up at that fall festival. They had to bless people from the old Kroger um, shopping center. Um, it was just, it was so many people there, it was unbelievable. Um, so we're so proud of them as well. Um, it is now time for our zoning. Uh, Ms. Judy, if you would, please come. We're gonna go back to item number six. Good evening, commissioners. Um, Good evening. The zoning petition before you this evening was tabled from our last meeting on October the 1st. It was tabled for a period of 30 days, which it came to this particular Board of Commissioners meeting. And the purpose behind that was to allow the district commissioner to be able to meet with people in his community. And a meeting was held on October 21st, 2019 at the Mansfield Community Center by District 1 Commissioner Stan Edwards in which the public was uh, invited and did turn out to discuss the uh, modification proposal. Uh, just to kind of give a little bit of a brief background because we did do a good bit of the presentation at the last meeting, however, there may be members here tonight that were not here at our last meeting. 
the proposal is, is to modify conditions of zoning that was placed on the project when it was rezoned in 2007. And the request is to modify uh, four conditions, which would be to modify the original boundary, which was 230.45 acres down to 55.06 acres to develop, to modify the total number of dwelling units from 750 that was originally projected down to 267 uh, units, and to add a building type to the master plan called condo slash apartments, and to add a building type to the master plan called Mount Pleasant Rentals. The property is located off of Highway 11 at the entrance going into the um, college, uh, which is now Georgia State College. Um, it's almost like Stanton Springs. We've changed several times. It's hard to remember. Uh, but you can see the outline of all of the uh, project lands uh, that are under request tonight to be amended. This is approximately the 55.06 acres. Um, again, there were conditions placed on the zoning when it was brought before uh, the Board of Commissioners in 2007, of which some of those conditions would no longer apply to the project. So the request is to amend some of the conditions and then staff has recommended conditions that we would like to see follow the project. Um, The, the primary goal of this particular, and I thought I had a picture, I apologize. The primary goal of this particular amendment, again, it does fall in the brick store overlay. So it does have to meet, I think one of the questions from a, a constituent earlier was that would it have to, uh, how would the brick store overlay affect this? It will be subject to all of the regulations of the brick store overlay, so it's not not going to meet those, it will meet it. But on top of that, there are other conditions that the project would also have to meet, of which I would like to read into record. Should the Board of Commissioners approve this modification, staff recommends the following conditions be approved as follows. One, to the owner's agreement to restrict the use of the subject property as follows. A, no more than 267 total dwelling and accessory uses and structures at a maximum density of 3.25 units to 4.85 units per acre. B, no more than 22,800 total square feet of mixed and non-residential uses. C, Modify the boundary, reducing the size from 230.45 acres to 55.06 acres to be developed and 175.39 acres to remain as a conservation area as defined by the 2009 Newton County Zoning Ordinance. D, to add a building type to the master plan called condo slash apartments. E, to add a building type to the master plan called Mount Pleasant Rentals. F, the minimum lot size shall be as follow. Cottage, 4,000 square feet. Estate lots or house, 65,000 square feet. Townhouse, 2,300 square feet. G, the minimum heating floor area per unit shall be as follows. Cottages, 900 square feet. Estate lot houses, 1,600 square feet. Townhouses, 1,200 square feet. Mid-rise condo slash apartments, 700 square feet. Student senior flats slash Mount Pleasant rental cottages, 500 square feet. Two, to the owner's agreement to abide by the following. A, to the site plan received by the Department of Development Services on September 11, 2019. Said site plan is conceptual only and must meet or exceed the requirements of the zoning ordinance and these conditions prior to the approval of a land disturbance permit. Unless otherwise noted herein, compliance with all conditions shall be in place prior to the issuance of the first certificate of occupancy. Three, to the owner's agreement to abide by the following development standards. A, reduce if necessary rules applying generally by the Newton County ordinance to comply with the master plan referenced in condition 2A, any reduction or variance to rules is subject to the approval of the director and in compliance with section 300-040H of the Newton County Zoning Ordinance. B, provide the following setbacks. 
For an estate lot or a house lot, the front yard shall be 15 feet, side yard 5 feet, rear yard 17 feet, including a 5-foot alley easement. Townhouse lots, front yard is a 0 foot, foot setback, side yard is 5 feet from the side yards adjacent to streets, and rear yards is a 12-foot alley easement. Commercial, there are no building setbacks for commercial and office uses. C. Provide off-street and on-street parking as shown in the master plan referenced in condition 2A. All off-street parking for commercial shall be located in the rear of the buildings. D. Provide a five-foot planting strip between the sidewalk and the back of the curb along all residential streets. E. Stormwater plan to be reviewed and approved by the county stormwater manager. F. Comply with all development standards as required by section 300-020A through P of the Newton County Zoning Ordinance. And I am happy to answer any questions. Again, this was heard last month. This was just <coughs> tabled so we would be able to meet with the neighbors in the area. And the request is actually just to reduce the project boundaries and to amend some of the um, types of housing products that would be there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, any questions, Commissioner? Thank you. I want to take this opportunity um, to open it up for those that want to speak in favor, the applicant and those that want to speak in favor tonight. You have 10 minutes to do so. Uh, please come and state your name, your address for the record, please, the applicant and those that want to speak in favor tonight. I'm uh, Randy Vinson, 450 Jenkins Road, Covington. Um, can I get the... Uh, thing reduced. I'm going to go, go quickly go through the slides. Uh, again, uh, the, the slides from last month, this was what the uh, area looked like in 2002 when the Arnold Fund purchased uh, the Mount Pleasant property. And uh, they did so in order to try to preserve uh, and, and make sure that quality development uh, was brought to this, this area. It was the the closest undeveloped interchange to Atlanta at that point. This was the zoning that was in place at the time in 2002 when it was purchased. Uh, ben and Alex Gross had, had purchased it in the 80s and zoned it to uh, residential multifamily, uh, industrial, M1 industrial, uh, highway commercial, neighborhood commercial, and R45 uh, residential, which was a three quarter acre lot uh, residential subdivision. We took the uh, the entire site back in 2005 when the uh, college, uh, we were able to attract the college to come out there. The Arnold Fund donated 100 acres to uh, Georgia Perimeter College at that time, uh, now Georgia State, and uh, gave them the land to build this campus and we designed a town around the campus so we could have a complete uh, village uh, around the college. Of course, uh, this was 2005, 2006. We got the zoning in 2007, and then the uh, real estate market went uh, south, and uh, it, we weren't able to, uh, to develop it this way. So now we're gonna look at the area that is not hatched right in the middle, and that's the 55 acres. What you see hatched now is going to be conserved forever in a permanent conservation easement that can never be developed. It'll always have to be pasture or woods, uh, whatever it is right now. And this is the revised master plan that we came up with um, this, this winter, I think February and March, we were working on this uh, revised plan and, and we, we didn't want to give up on the thought of having a town or, a, or a, at least a, a small village near the campus. It, we worked so hard to get the college here and we felt it would be a great uh, anchor for a new community. And we want to, we want to see that come to, uh, to fruition, that we build a complete mix of housing types and uses. Uh, and I'm going to quickly run through what some of those uses would be. Standing um, right in the middle of the square, which would be right here. These are the campus buildings that are existing out there. This would be the view, you know, looking back right here across this square 
to the to the campus building. And then if you just swing 360 degrees looking back this way, uh, I mean 180 degrees, you would see a mix uh, of condominiums, apartments above, uh, corner shops, townhomes, all in this area where you see the orange. Uh, so we're gonna do a, a denser core right here at the campus. Driving in the, uh, the parkway going in, the, um, it's such a uh, monumental drive that we felt that, that we couldn't do smaller houses along here. It really needed to be big stately mansions. But the market for big stately mansions in Newton County isn't, isn't real robust. So we, we felt that it would take us forever to, to deliver that unless we would do them uh, what we're calling mansion houses. And these will be uh, one and two bedroom condominiums or apartments in uh, four or five units per building. And, and this is what the housing style will be along here. So it'll be a big stately mansion uh, flanking the, the entrance drive in. These are the housing types that you would see in the, in the yellow lots. Uh, we're gonna develop it just like we've done at Clark's Grove here in Covington. Uh, the same lot sizes, same uh, alleyway, uh, access for the, the, you know, the garages will be in the back. You won't see garage doors along the street, uh, sidewalk and street trees. So we want this to be a very walkable neighborhood. And then also up here at the flank in the uh, campus building where we're going for a little bit higher density in this area, there'll be condominiums, condominiums uh, in these buildings, these corner units uh, and smaller apartments And then what we, we, we have referred to as the uh, Mount Pleasant rental, uh, we were looking at doing a cluster of tiny houses that would be single ownership. The, the, uh, one owner would own several of these uh, structures. And this is all conserved land out here, all surrounding this. So it'll be pasture land. And these will be used as um, either short-term rentals for uh, weddings, uh, also for faculty, visiting faculty at the college, uh, this sort of, thing. even just retreats for uh, folks that want to get out of Atlanta to come out and enjoy uh, living in the country for a weekend. Uh, so that's the, that's the thought here is, is having almost a resort retreat-like atmosphere. And then the, the commercial up here uh, at, at uh, Highway 11, will be just three simple buildings, three or four small simple buildings that will be, you know, the rural character, uh, not high intensity commercial. It'll just be, um, you know, hopefully an ice cream shop or, or uh, a small restaurant, um, even an insurance office, that sort of thing. It's, it's not gonna be a high intensity commercial development. And uh, that's the uh, that's the master plan. Any questions, guys? Oh, thank you, sir. Anyone else want to speak in favor? Good evening. My name is Charlie Tuller. I am uh, pinch hitting for Rob Fowler uh, tonight. Um, Rob is very disappointed he can't be here. He's uh, on a uh, ship crossing the Atlantic, heading towards the Medi Mediterranean. Uh, this is a very important project to Rob, so he wishes to be here. He was at the last meeting, as you know, and he attended the uh, neighborhood uh, town hall meeting in Mansfield. Uh, among the things he talked about was uh, that he was uh, a four-generation Newton Countyan and that he was a neighbor living on Skyland Drive. Uh, he also talked about a number of demonstration projects that he has done individually and uh, through the Arnold Fund, which was a uh, charity set up by his uncle Bob Arnold. 
Uh, these included uh, the um, the loss in downtown Covington, of which you know, uh, Rob Fowler now owns the uh, ground floor, which, accre uh, which includes Amici's and uh, Scoops. In fact, um, Randy Vinson knew the owners of both the restaurants in Madison, and uh, he helped get them here, and the Arnold Fund made a, a deal that they really couldn't turn down at uh, very reduced rents. So at the time, uh, those were very important additions to downtown Covington. He's also presently doing the Stevenson House, which is um, an old, uh, beautiful mansion um, on Emory Street between Clark and Washington Street. He has just remodeled uh, three very uh, high-end apartments in the carriage house. Um, and the long range plan is for that to be 10 uh, uh, high end apartment uh, units, which um, uh, one bedrooms are renting for $1,100 a month. So it is very high end. I think many of you have seen it. Um, uh, the other demonstration project uh, was Clark's Grove. And that um, the, the um, one side was virtually completed before the downturn in 07. And um, through Rob Fowler's uh, efforts, uh, he bought some additional properties that were owned by the Arnold Fund, which would enable the uh, Clark's Cove not to be foreclosed. And three of us now are developing across the street and we're keeping the same standards uh, in the uh, north side of the street in Clark's Grove as the, as the previous side. It will be a project that uh, that all of um, Newton County can be proud of, and I know Rob is extremely proud of it. And um, his, his dream for uh, Highway 11 is that uh, he continue this um, Clark's Grove uh, replication uh, across from the college. Thank you, sir. Uh, your time is up. We greatly appreciate it, and um, okay. thank you for speaking in favor tonight. Now we also allow 10 minutes for those that want to oppose. Um, you may do so at this time. If you would, please come and state your name, your address for the record, please. Anyone want to oppose tonight? Good evening, folks. <clears throat> Good evening. Thank you for letting me speak. My name is Terrell Godfrey. And um, I live in District 1, about a mile from this development. I'm out of the loop on this thing at the moment, partially due to, and I'm sitting with a neighbor of mine that I didn't know was a neighbor. We had no indication that this issue was coming up again. I was involved in it very, fairly heavily in 2007. At that time, I'm tempted to say 99.9% .9 of the residents out there were firmly against this project. We didn't like it. We pay a lot of taxes, higher than a lot of the area of the country, of the county, in order to have a rural atmosphere. Many of us out there, like myself, built our own homes and designed our own homes, and we wanted that atmosphere. Here's the issue. We only let this go through because Randy Vinson and his buddies and his associates promised us there would never be apartments. There would never be high density living arrangements put out there. So now, here it is being shoved at us again. And the question is, how can we believe these developers now when we didn't have their, when their word wasn't good before? They say they're going to keep it in conservancy. That can be broken. Any of you who have researched it will know this. So what's the point? Why do we try to keep a county with some rural character if developers are just going to run over us? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Ricky Mock, 65 Mystic Lane, Social Circle, Georgia. I own land out there around the hub and in this area. 
and we fought against the brick store community and all the regulations that was being being put on us there that gave us a, a disadvantage to selling our property because of the strong regulations. And we were told that that this thing was already put in place and it had to stay that as long as he kept the same plan that he was approved to go with it. Well, now he's back changing the plan, adding apartments, adding townhouses. We're told we've got to have two acres and 1,800 square feet, but he's going to build 500 square foot tiny homes and list them on R&B and rent them out to anybody that wants to rent them. And that's not what that community would like to have out there. But you're all saying he's got to abide by the same rules as the brick store community. So if that's the way it is, then the rest of the property owners should be able to build 500 square foot tiny homes, houses with four apartments in them. All I ask is you treat all of us the same. So if you vote, vote for it tonight, you're voting for all the other property owners to be treated the same way as Rob Fowler's being treated. Right or wrong? Thank you, sir. Any, anyone else? Anyone else? Thank you. That portion of our public hearing is closed. Uh, Mr. Mr. Edwards. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, a month ago, um, this zoning amendment was on the agenda, and I asked this board to table the issue for a month so that I could socialize particulars of the development and get some of my questions answered and answer as many questions as possible for the concerned residents. In that month, I have attempted to understand the facts and get answers to questions, and the, the owner and myself even had a, a joint meeting out in Mansfield, which we, uh, by my count, we had about 30, 30 residents attend. Uh, for a little history, on February 20th of 2007, the BOC approved a development of 230.45 acres zoned for commercial, commercial property, single family, and multifamily structures. In 2007, that was approved for this property. Apartments were approved for this property in 2007. Approximately 800 total rooftops, including 300 and 22 multifamily homes. In 2007, that was approved to include lost flats and apartments. In July of this year, the applicant asked to have a zoning amendment placed on the BOC agenda. The current zoning amendment asks that this 230.45 acre development be shrunk to 55 acres. Keep in mind, he was approved since 2007 by a previous board for 322 multifamily homes. The current zoning amendment again asks that the 230.45 acre development be reduced to 55 acre development. The difference of 175.39 acres to be placed in the conservation easement or land trust as permanent green space. The now proposed 55 acre development reduced the number of multifamily homes to 190 from 322 a reduction of 132 multifamily <coughs> homes from the original development. It's important that everyone understand if we were to deny this zoning amendment, then the owner is still okayed for 320 multifamily homes. Denial of this zoning amendment would mean the owner pursue other options, and those options, in my opinion, are highly, highly undesirable. I will not risk the alternative scenarios. While campaigning in 2016, I spoke with residents in the area, many residents in the area, and the overwhelming majority asked, majority asked that I ensure the rural integrity of District 1 be preserved. Everyone seemed to understand that the development would eventually happen, that, that development, not this development, but that development would eventually happen, but they were concerned, their only concern was how this development would take place. <clears throat> The owner and myself have reached out to Dave Belton and Brian Strickland, Senator, uh, Senator Brian Strickland and Representative Dave Belton. I spoke with those folks 30 minutes before this meeting started in person. Uh, 
we're going to re reinitiate the effort to make Highway 11 from Interstate 20 a parkway, a four-lane parkway. We've got we've got traffic issues out there now, so we're going to re reinitiate that effort to to make that parkway at least through 278 on Highway 11. Uh, the 100-foot setback is in effect, so the the, the right-of-way is there. So. Um, Based on the alternatives, which I find unacceptable, and the fact that a large portion of the property will now be in green space and un 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 unable to be developed, I would not be doing what is best for the quality of life of residents of District 1, including myself, who I, I live in the area, if I did not support this, now, this zoning amendment. With that, Mr. Chairman, I would like to make a motion to approve zoning modification MOD 19-00003. May I get a second, please? Second. It's been motioned by Commissioner Edwards and second by Commissioner Mason. Any discussion? Um, Commissioner uh, Schultz. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Oh, go, go, ahead. go ahead. I just need to um, acknowledge uh, and disclose that I, in a previous election cycle, I accepted um, campaign contributions from Mr. Fowler. I disclosed those properly, and I just wanted to disclose that again tonight. Uh, Commissioner, uh, can you restate your motion and um, add the conditions to it, please? Uh, or just say with, with conditions. Um. I would like to make a motion to approve modification, zoning modification MOD 19-00003 with recommended conditions. Thank you. Commissioner Mason. Second. Thank you. Uh, again, it's been motioned by Commissioner um, Edwards and second by Commissioner Mason. Any more discussion? All in favor? It passed 4 0. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, next on the agenda is um, the finance. Um, Ms. Brittany, if you would, please come. We have Good evening. These are the first quarter financials for FY20. So this is July through September. So far to date, our total revenue has been 5.5 million. So we're 8% of our budget right now in revenues, which is pretty standard for this time of year because tax, re tax revenues <clears throat> have not been generating in yet. So next month we should start seeing our revenues flow in a little bit more. And this is just a bar graph of our revenues per month. So July, August, and September. And here's where we are as to date versus our budget, which, like I said, is pretty normal for this time of year as tax revenues have not been coming in yet. Right now, our current expenditure budget has been 15 million, which is at 22% of our annual budget. Um, so 25% should be where, about where we're at. So 22 is pretty, um, fairly a good estimate of our expenditures this year and here's a bar graph that's just showing July August and September and this is every department's budget in the general fund to date through September everybody's looking to be on track for the year the few departments that may be over the 25 percent is generally some bigger expenditures we have in the beginning of the year, and then throughout the end of the year, their expenditures do fall off. So our revenues and our expenditures to date, revenues 5.5, expenditures 15 million. Um, and then we've done a budget. The budget did, we encumbered 131,000 from last year's budget, so that's why, as of right now on this budget, it's not 
it's no longer balanced because we did move 131 from last year into this year. And this is a graph showing our general fund balance. So currently, this is an unaudited fund balance. So our audit will be complete probably December. So this is subject to change. But as of right now, our fund balance is looking about 19 million. Um, so it, we have increased it in the last few years. So we are finally getting in a place where our fund balance is where it needs to be. And enterprise funds, um, everyone's on track to be where they need to be right now. Everybody's over the 25% of where we should be. Gaithers has brought in 78% um, of their budgeted revenue due to some movies being filmed out there. Um, so they've also spent a little bit more money out there to make up for these movies, but everybody's looking to be on track to where they need to be for the enterprise funds as well. 2005 SPLOS, the only thing we have going on here is just the COPS 06 admin debt that will be paid off with the 05 SPLOS until December 2020, and then the 2005 SPLOS will be wrapped up. 2011 SPLOS is really the only major projects we still have left are the Storton Jail and Fire Station Number 8, and Fire Station Number 8 is currently in the works of being finished. 2017 SPLOST, um, we've got our bond, bonded projects going on right now. So we've got the animal control, senior services, um, the sheriff's department should start on their expansion pretty soon. So recreation is also, they're um, moving along with their projects as well. Our SPLOST collections have been exceeding what we anticipated. So right now I'm projecting to be fully collected in our SPLOS by the end of FY 2022. So then we should have a year's worth of excess collections if we continue on the path that we are now. So currently our collections are over the projected by 4.2 million. And so far in FY 20, we have collected 252,000 in impact fees. And that is it. <coughs> Anybody have any questions? Thank you so much. I'll commit, I'll commission Henderson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. If 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 I want to um, access the uh, solid waste um, funds, how could I? Uh, of course, what being spent, how much being spent, how could I access that? Um, I do financials for Kevin monthly, so I could send you an email copy of those or get you a printed copy to Ms. Jackie. Yes, ma'am. Um, and secondly. If I want to know what's being spent in the uh, water and, and sewer, um, I'm talking about off Brown Beach Road, you know, where they collect for the, um, uh, uh, for the water and sewer, where there's taps and et cetera, how can I access that fund, that, uh, that enterprise fund? I can send you a copy of whatever you want to see. So if you want to see details, I can print yes, you out a detailed report and get it over to you. Yes, ma'am. And I guess the last one, the three that was on my late bond, how could I access? I mean, hold, can hold, I have hold, um, hold on one second. Let's let's, let's just clear up something. Okay. Yeah. Um, he, he's talking about. Th uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, um, yeah. Any information on the sewer taps, uh, Commissioner, um, and the water taps would have to come from water and sewer authority we can provide water resources numbers which are water production but the water and sewer taps would have to come from water and sewer maybe, maybe i would direct my question to, to the wrong person please forgive me the only thing what i'm saying i think what I, I spoke a few months ago was about that and what i think what we all had said about transparency about we want to know how our money and stuff is, is being spent and that it that we were going to display it so that the public would know. And so, you know, I'm just kind of reinforcing, you know, we would like to know how it's being spent, what's being borrowed, and how it's being paid back with all the inter enterprise fund that we have. Because I do believe that our, the taxpayers in Newton County, put it that bill, either through splash or some other means of, uh, of them having monies in order to have those particular funds. And so I would like for the public to be able to access all these enterprise funds, knowing how the money's being spent and where it's being spent and what the balance is. And the reason why I'm asking these questions is, so everybody would know, is that I think we uh, we should be held accountable for those as well because sometimes our 
general fund have been close to have a negative balance in all our enterprise funds are just flourishing and have excess cash millions of dollars and yet you know we as taxpayers i think on one two as taxpayers uh you know are having to um, pay more money taxes going up even though i, I read in the paper says not but i believe that, it, that they are going up and we have all this money that we don't have access to from the for the enterprise fund that we all contribute to and then flourishing them should be able to give back something to the citizens of, of new county thank you um the transparency module that we implemented two weeks ago you can also see enterprise funds in there so it's not just limited to general fund yes ma'am thank you I'm sorry. Um, I was just going to address, but I think Brittany covered it well. That it is part of that Socrata, the the um, our, our new transparency module. So any funded information can be obtained there. But certainly, Commissioner, we can send you copies of whatever. We can get print those off too and get them out. Thank you. And, yeah. So any, whatever any, you want to see, I'll be happy to get you. But any citizen can access yes. the new page. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. It's right on yes. our website. So the transparency tab, there's a link directly to it. And it has the software is generated from our software system. So it's updated weekly. So I think every Friday the information is updated. So it's directly from all the information that's in our software system. And you can see all our financials, is that correct? You can see um, you can see vendors we've wrote checks to. My financials are not on the transparency module, but they are on another place in our um, on our website. Um, Commissioner Schultz, it's all there. Well, I was just going to ask if Brian could show that uh, that slide that just shows the the enterprise what, what what an enterprise fund might look like on the transparency model board, since you already have that queued up. Guide me over here, Brittany. I just know sometimes it's difficult for us when we're looking at the um, at a new program and if we've got if we can see what it actually looks like it might be helpful to the public to see where to go Very helpful. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Any anyone else? Anyone else? Uh, thank you, Brittany. Uh, next, we have is item number nine, the consent agenda. I seek a motion of approval, please. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the consent agenda. Yeah. It's been motioned by Commissioner Schultz and second by Commissioner Edwards. All in favor? Passes. Four to zero. Thank you. Um, next is um, discussion of the sale of spirituous liquor by the bottle. Uh, Mr. Kerr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to turn it over to our county attorney, Ms. Martin. Uh, has prepared a few slides for you on this topic. pretty familiar with these slides. About a year ago, we tackled this topic just to go ahead and divvy out what would happen. So please forgive me if you've already seen them, but we're going to go through it together. Okay, so the issue is Commissioner Edwards was approached by a group of Newton County citizens regarding a referendum for the sale of distilled spirits in unincorporated Newton County. 
And it's not only Commissioner Edwards. Uh, with a previous board, I had two folks that were very interested. And I believe we have board, board members now who are supportive. So how does the Board of Commissioners proceed? Seven, and we're gonna show you seven steps for compliance uh, to present a referendum on the sale of distilled spirits in unincorporated Newton County. Uh, to this point, unincorporated Newton County has not permitted the package sale of distilled spirits. So let's go through those steps. Step one, get a written petition containing the signatures of at least 35% of the registered and qualified voters of Newton County. This is computed based upon the number of voters who are qualified to vote at the general election, immediately <clears throat> to vote at the general election, immediately preceding the presentation of the petition that was signed by 35%. These voters shall also be registered and qualified to vote in the referendum election. So this one we're setting up for you how to introduce the concept into your community to see if the community is actually interested in this issue. Step two, once you have your uh, petition that's got 35% of our local voters approving, we're going to then, we're going to send that over to Angela Mantle and her team at the Board of Elections. Uh, they will then take care of how that referendum looks. I mean, we give the language but just how it occurs, it, we work with Angela pretty closely. So you guys should get a, a way to see what it's gonna look like. Okay, so step three, um, the election superintendent does validate whether the signatures on the petition are the names of registered and qualified voters. Um, you know, this is a big issue now currently nationally for us to ensure that those that are voting are still alive. You know, we've heard of those <laughs> cases where you took the name of your uncle who might have, you know, that could make your better situation. So once she um, validates what are the sig signatures are, the names of registered and qualified voters, that will take care of this preliminary part of getting a referendum. So let's move on to four. Um, step four, after the election superintendent validates the petition, the superintendent should call and hold a referendum election. Fortunately, you have an election coming next year if you choose to move forward, so we wouldn't be put in the spot to have to pay for a special election in the services of the board. Um, I was going to say board of equalization, but the board. Um, so we're going to hold a referendum election in step five. The election superintendent sets the date of the referendum election for no less than 30 nor more than 60 days after the call. The referendum election may be held as a special referendum election or at the time of any other primary or election in Newton County. If the election is to be held no more than 60 days after the call. So this is if you kind of back up one through four. We're getting the we're testing if citizens want this. We're also giving the steps about how to go about to ensure that our local constituents understand what this means. I, I do like this language here um, about the amount of time you have to do your call. Otherwise, you have citizens who are saying, but I was there. You said we were going to do this. You're not doing this. So that that's what this slide goes to as far as making sure everyone has general notice to come out and cast their vote. Step six, uh, the election superintendent publishes the notice of the call for the referenda in a newspaper of general circulation in Newton County. It should be published once a week for two weeks immediately preceding the date of the referendum election. This is where time management comes into a part of this project. Um, it, you have to understand if we're doing once a week for two weeks immediately before the date of the referendum election, we've got to get cracking off on our ads, but this is the part of the statutory process where we can look at and create our one, two, three list. Um, talking about form of ballots that are used, I had some questions on that, so I thought I'd throw a slide in there for you. Um, the ballot used in any referendum election held pursuant to 3441 shall have written or printed thereon. And you see the two very generic items that would be on the referendum. Shall the issuance of licenses for the per package of sale of distilled spirits be approved? Yes, no. Seems easy enough um, to be able to 
go and vote appropriately. So I told you there's seven steps. This is the seventh. Um, if the referendum is approved by a majority of the voters, then package sales of distilled spirits shall be permitted. If, however, the referendum is disapproved by a majority of voters, another election cannot be held until after two years have passed. Um, this is uh, just a graphic to kind of go along with what we're talking about. Um, let's talk just moment, momentarily about package stores, because that was how uh, it was approached. The county may adopt resolutions and ordinances as may fall within the powers of the county to regulate any business described in this chapter. No county shall authorize the location of a new retail package liquor license place business or the relocation of an existing retail package licensed liquor, liquor license place of business. And these are engaged in the retail package of sales of distilled spirits within 500 yards of any other business that's also licensed to sell liquor. Uh, currently, that's not an issue in the county. Um, the county issuing licenses pursuant to the article shall, within its jurisdiction, have the authority to determine the location and any retail business it licenses if they decide to begin pouring alcohol or purchasing alcohol. So the key issues to keep um, together, let's talk near term, identify the key decisions and issues that we need immediate or near term resolution. This means you'll get those annoying emails from me or I keep following up but it's very important that I understand the board's will in this matter. So after we've identified those key decisions, we need to think about the state consequences, state consequences of decision. Um, I would like to, to put out there, there are, I'm not gonna go deep in the minutia of the election machines of what is happening there, um, but I bet this item would have to be broken up into like three, if you'd vote three on that. Um, so long-term, you're going to identify the issues needed long-term. You're going to state the consequences of decision postponement. If you're seeking funding, be specific about any issues that require financial resources for the resolution. As you all have seen, when there was a bond issuance on the East Georgia settlement, what we're saying here is that we want to make sure that it, we don't want to get in that bad decision um, mode. Therefore. Uh, we're going to work on determining long-term, listening to citizens about what issues they think are important, and tying those to the strategic planning. Um, this is your current ordinance. I'm not going to sit here and read it for you. Um, as I said in the beginning, you do currently do not have the authority to have a liquor store or have somewhere you buy liquor by the container. Um, you all are aware of the brunch bill. Um, it is the alcohol sales statute for Sundays um, that you cannot sell alcohol before a certain time period. I believe it's 12.30 uh, is when that happens. Um, you do have to have a referendum. So if you decided you want to look at that item, uh, we must put that forward to the voters. Um, and the current hours for sales of alcohol, you have it beginning at 12.30 p.m. Through a referendum, you can commence as early as 11 a.m. Okay, I'm going to come back over to my regular side and see if I can answer any questions. Uh, commissioners, any questions? Uh, Commissioner Henry. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, have, have we looked at or um, uh, had any type of uh, award session as far as, you know, if, if it was uh, implemented where we sell uh, alcohol throughout the un unincorporated Union County, do we have to have an increase in, in possible uh, law enforcement? Uh, could, uh, do you think that may be a factor? Have we, um, uh, at some point, Need to, if we're going to move forward with it, I think should have a um, have a discussion with the uh, office of sheriff, sheriff Brown, and, and see might be um, be thinking in terms of additional office, officers and what the cost may be. And, and I think that when you <clears throat> when you place um, liquor stores throughout the county, if that be the case, then you there may possibly be um, increasing some requirements. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm sorry. Commissioner, Commissioner Short, and then Commissioner Hill. So, my understanding after we review this is that those individuals that have approached us about um, a package store referendum, we should tell them that they need to get a petition that's signed by at least 35% of voters in the county. So, they have to get 35% of the qualified voters in the county, in the entire county. Okay. Um, just one, one quick question to follow up on what the commission said. Now, with the purchase on uh, particular parts of the land in the county, um, let's just say Salem Road. Um, do we do they have to get um, signatures in that area or okay uh, Commissioner Hill. thank you mr. sheriff so the, the, the seven steps outlined are statute okay so um, I guess Ryan, can we have those put on the website uh, pretty quick? Yeah, those slides. It's, yeah, let's just have the, all those slides put on the website if we could in the most, uh, in the most readable format for all, anyone who wants to put liquor by the bottle on the, on the ballot, that these, it's out of our hands, these are the steps. Thank you, Mr. Chair. If if um, if we put on our website, or or we go out to collect the signatures to who who may want it in the, in the uh, unincorporated Union County, are we doing that work? Uh, I guess that's to the uh, county attorney. Who's 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 responsible for uh, getting those signatures? Any of the folks that are sitting out there, or you yourself can say to your constituent who calls you and says, you know, I'm glad y'all discussed this, but I want to know what the, you know, what does this mean? So it doesn't have to be the uh, person who's acting for a liquor, a liquor store? Right. It can be anybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess the follow-up question is, if you're going to ask who all want a liquor store, should it be another question posed who may not want it? Um, Commissioner Henderson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, that, they they would vote, Mr. Henderson, I guess they'd vote against it if they didn't want it, right? I mean, that, that's the way you say no to anything, I guess, if you vote against it. If it gets on the ballot. Right. I just think we're doing double work. I think it should get put on the ballot later. <laughs> vote in, vote out. Anyone else? Uh, Commissioner Schultz. So, I just need some clarification. When we put alcohol by the drink on the referendum, I don't think we went through these steps. Are, is, are these steps specific to package sale? No, uh, so I will try and in this, if it's the board's desire, that we clean that up as a part of that process. Because that's, I mean, we had it should be identical. There was a referendum. And, and the voters voted on a referendum. I just know that I don't, I'm almost positive there wasn't a petition prior to putting that on the referendum. I think we just voted as a board to put it on as wow. a referendum and let the public decide. So I think that that's something that will probably come back to uh, for discussion as to why now we have to have that 35%. Um, so just, but it's, it's, I mean, I, I don't have a problem with doing that. I'm just saying that uh, Commissioner Henderson, correct me if I'm wrong, but when we, when we put that on the ballot, what, back in 2012, something like that? Um, but anyway, I'm just asking for that clarification. Okay. All right. Anyone else? So there's no action on this tonight. Um, 
we got the steps out there that okay all right thank you so much um next is um um discussion it's item number 11 discussion consideration and participation in a gun buyback program um i'm gonna start it off and then i'll let the sheriff come up sheriff you want to come on up now while i start this off um i want to thank this board um um for the willingness and i know we haven't voted yet but uh the program is already taking place um there was a uh, 100 and, I think 159 guns that were turned in. Um, and so I am I am super excited that those guns are off the street and um, and and I'm and I'm I'm thankful that um, you know this 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 was even done in our in our community. Um, I think it's a public safety issue. Um, and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm just glad that we got people in our community that's willing to step up to the plate and put initiatives in place um, to try to make our community a safe, a safer place. Um, you know, there's, and I, I let the sheriff speak on it. Um, thank you, sir, for being here tonight. Mr. Chair and those of you that make up the board, uh, good evening. I'm honored to stand here uh, today I first would like to pass out just a couple of documents just to show you how this program. And what you have there is uh, what is being passed out is simply, uh, we had a question and answer form that we put on our uh, webpage. Uh, and also there's um, a letter to the editor from one of our partners, uh, Pastor Lee uh, from Springfield. But I guess first, uh, first off, I need to say, and one of the things that I made clear in this is that um, I, I believe in the Second Amendment. I believe in the Second Amendment, and I think that's where uh, some of the listeners or whomever viewers may have uh, thought that's what, what we was infringing on. I'm one of the individuals who grew up, I cut my teeth at seven years old uh, hunting, uh, coon hunting, rabbit hunting, uh, and all the above. So I know the importance of the Second Amendment and value it, and I uphold the Constitution because even in my oath of office, my oath of office state that I will uphold the Constitution of the United States, and not only the United States, but of Georgia. So that's my whole goal. But as it relate to the um, gun buyback, we first approached this as a public safety issue, but even in stepping out and just the assumption that it would be public safety, <clears throat> there was a few things happen and opened my eyes um, to some things that we need to do um, at the office of sheriff just for availability. We had a number of individuals, you've already stated the number of guns that was um, received um, but I think let me go back and just answer one of the questions uh, before. One of the main questions was, was there um, tax dollars used in this? And absolutely not. There was no tax dollars used. We made it clear and we have no issue in sharing um, funding that was used. The funding that was used was, uh, was funding that was um, confiscated by uh, some criminals who have violated the law. Sheriff, let me, let me, um, cause I don't want nobody to, to go out of here and try to, um, use that statement against you. Uh, there was tax dollars used from the Board of Commission okay. side of it. Okay. So I just want to clean that up before somebody take that out. Thank you. But um, from the Office of Sheriff, there was no tax dollars used from the Office of Sheriff. Um, 
but also as I was stating that uh, it opened our eyes in terms of some of the things we need to make available uh, at our office. Um, one particular case in itself, there was a lady who was a widow who chose to come in and bring a gun in, and that particular gun was had been handed down through generations and generations, and it was no, not even functional anymore. But she just wanted to get rid of the gun because of fear of someone getting uh, access to it. The next uh, person brought guns in, and this this is where it really hit home. That was one lady brought twenty guns in. Twenty guns. And those guns was from past members who was affiliated in law enforcement. And they had been just holding on to these guns uh, ever since the 1930s and 40s. And this is what she said to me. She said, Sheriff, we've been holding on to these guns in our family for all these years. We had no uh, way of knowing how to safely get rid of these guns. So we thought about taking them to the pawn shop, but if we take them to the pawn shop, they'd be resold. So, and, and, and there's no telling who gained access to those guns. If we sold them to just individuals that we knew, then we know the guns would get into the wrong hands of individuals. That was 20 guns from one individual. There was another individual who walked up and said, Sheriff, I have two shotguns. And the way I came in possession of these shotguns, and this is a person who is a strong uh, uh, believe in the Second Amendment, but this is what he said to me. He said, the way I came about these guns, I was at one of the compactor sites. I noticed the gentleman uh, who never was getting rid of the guns. The person at the compactor site decided that they would pick the guns up and they was carrying them back to the shed. This particular gentleman said he asked the person there at the compactor site shed, how much would you take for those guns? Because he had a fear that the guns would get in the wrong hands. He bought the guns from the person at the compactor site and held on to those guns and brought them to turn them in to us. We had other cases, again, where we just had widows and, and grandparents who just wanted the guns out of their home. And I have decided that I think it's imperative to us that we, we're not asking for individuals to bring guns in, but I think it's imperative after seeing that, that we should make an avenue of some sort if a person wants to get rid of a gun that that person can bring that gun to the office of shit. Um, it, it, was, it was amazing to see this person walk up with 20 guns in one container and said, I've been holding on to these guns for year after year after year, and we could not figure out the best solution. Had we had an opportunity for them to bring into the sheriff's office, perhaps we would have had them early. Um, had we not had this um, buyback, Perhaps she would still have those guns inside of her home. Possibility they could have been stolen. Had we not had the gun buyback, the gentleman who had the shotgun, who had the initiative to buy the shotgun from the compactor site, perhaps those shotguns would still be on the streets. And there are many other guns that we received. And even after spending two and a half hours there, there were still calls coming in where individuals just wanted to get rid of their guns. And I take it as being a success uh, for the community. We got, again, 100 plus guns off the streets. Um, not to say that it's going to, uh, it's, it's going to curtail, combat crime. But one of the things that we do know, those 100 plus guns that we do have will not be in the hands of individuals who are irresponsible. And we, that was our goal, and we achieved our goal in a very um, manageable way. And, and I view it as being a success.
Here, can you take a couple of questions? Yes, yes sir. Any commissioners, any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. And um, I, you know, I commend your effort on the buyback program. I, I did take the opportunity to ask some of my constituents for their perspective because I wanted to make sure that I was representative of what they would like, not just my own personal perspective. Mm -hmm. And I got some questions that I'd like to just run past you. Sure. Um, I, I understand that um, there are no questions that are asked of individuals. They, they can volunteer the information, but there's no questions that are asked to know that. So one of the concerns that was raised was how do we know if these guns, are, if, how do we make sure that they haven't been used in a crime and then they're not available for evidence? All of the guns was received by a crime scene technician. The guns was then ran through, um, they're being run through ATF, and then there's, if there's any issues of crimes of any sort, we have mechanisms of how we can run trace of them. So all of that was covered. Okay. And then I guess the other question, well, my other question is actually for the Board of Commissioners. So thank you. That was the that, that was the question that I kept getting repeatedly was how are we making sure that these are not stolen guns that um, are and potentially being used, having been used in a crime? <clears throat> Up until this point, we have um, checked, I think, more than 50%, 80% of the weapons. Only one firearm was stolen, stolen from another state some years ago and we have managed to contact the owner of those guns, that particular gun, and we're in the process of making sure that owner received their gun. Oh, I, it, it may be helpful in this buyback program if we just provide that information to the public in some type of a written format so that they, just like these facts, if we could add that to the facts that was the first thing we put out is the fact sheet um, in terms of questions most frequent asked questions we put that out um, we always know that there's going to be some uh, resistance uh, anytime you uh, speak of this and and, uh, and i think what happens is the um, sometimes the silent majority uh, are quiet but um, we had no intentions of disrupting anyone's uh, life or livelihood. Uh, our simple approach was to, um, and again, when the grandmother brought 20 guns to me to dispose of, I knew then that we need to have some mechanism in place so that when a person feels that they would like to bring a weapon in, we need to be able to have it available so that we can do this. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Henry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, you just visited through the question I want to ask, and then it was a comment I'm going to make. The question was, and I, I think it's uh, to you, Mr. Chairman, is that you said that um, there was county uh, money used. Um, so, how much county kind of money were you used? Um, um, I'll get Mr. Kerr to, to confer this, but it was, I think it was $3,000. I think it came from special events. Is that correct? Yes, we have a line for special events, and that was where the, the, the uh, money was. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And the comment is, is that, Sheriff Allen, we appreciate what you're doing in, in the community. <clears throat> and uh, that's a, a program that needs to be done. Uh, in our communities. In, in fact, I, I requested it be done also in, in Nelson Heights. And so, but what I think is, is important about the gun buyback, or more important, is the fact you're telling these people that in order to get these guns off the streets, they look here, so this is somewhat confidential. So you bring them to us and we're going to uh, accept them. And, you know, in, in, in somewhat saying, the count, no question asked. And he was very highly, um, I think, su successful in the community because it took, uh, took a lot of guns off the street. 
It's easy for somebody to come and say, well, you know, hey, man, say, uh, uh, you know, they shouldn't have did this, they shouldn't have did that. But it could have been that same gun that could have hurt or killed somebody from their family or families. And um, so, you know, I'd rather be proactive than reactive. I'd rather take it advantage of every program that's out there in order to protect our citizens in the community. And we thank you, Sheriff Rock. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you sir. Um, Commissioner Mason and then Commissioner Epps. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Sheriff, I want to commend you for this particular program. I think it's a phenomenal program. I think it is much needed uh, within our community. And I wanted to ask how often we, I know you did it this last time, how often will that occur or, or and when is the next event? Or uh, Ms. Uh, Commissioner, it's, that's kind of hard to say. Um, with, uh, you know, I, I, I don't think that we could afford too many walking up with 20, 20 guns. <laughs> uh, so I, I don't know. That's something that we would seriously have to look at. But one of the things I want to say and, um, is, is just making it available so that it can happen. Um, I had someone to bring two firearms into the office of here. And they brought those firearms in just a couple days back, simply because of the fact that there was a domestic dispute going on in the home. And they brought two weapons in to get them out of the home in fear of something could happen. So I think making it available so that um, citizens can come into the sheriff's office, I think that's the most important piece to let them know that it's available. I agree with you. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. uh, Commissioner uh, Elwood. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Sheriff. Um, if I had had a gun stolen, was there any way for me to walk up and have your, your crime scene person uh, cross-reference my serial number that I had from a, maybe a gun that I had stolen from my home or from my vehicle or something? Is there any way for me to walk up and have my serial number checked and maybe uh, recoup my gun? Yes, sir. And that's what happened. As a matter of fact, the gun that um, we recovered was from another state, and um, we were able to run the serial number, and once we ran the serial number, we was able to determine that the weapon was stolen from another state. So if you uh, had a firearm that was stolen, you can supply us with the serial number, then any of those guns, we would run, uh, or we are running the serial number, and it would come back that it belonged to you. So so the person in North Carolina, they they were contacted and said, hey, we got your gun, is that, is that what that's, happened? That's correct. Oh, okay. That's correct. And we're in the process now of getting the firearm back to um, that particular person. Thank you. That's a, that's always a good question I have from my constituency. So you said you only had the one stolen gun, but otherwise it was guns. Uh, were there assault weapons, uh, you know, uh, 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 semi-automatic pistols? I mean, concealable weapons or, or, or we have the majority hunting shotguns or hunting knives. we had guns of all sort um the 20 plus guns that were brought in by this one individual was all as you would say saturday night specials um they were all handguns um, but we had guns of all sort and one of the things also mr mr commissioner is that we had this grandparent for whatever reason, had grandkids in the home, and um, and they indicated that they had gotten tired of moving the guns from one place to the next place to the next place, and and the thought crossed their mind this week as they were taking the grandkids to school that instead of moving the gun from one station to the next station, they thought the best thing to do would be is to bring the guns and and not have the kids who. Uh, living in fear, um, in fear of the kids um, being shot. I think of a case uh, uh, not re 
very long ago in Columbus, Georgia, where uh, ordinary citizen, ordinary citizen just like you and I, uh, parents would sleep late on Saturday morning, would tuck the gun away, and this particular uh, Saturday morning, they thought they had hidden the gun deep enough in the sofa. But guess what? While the parents were asleep, the five-year-old shot and killed, not shot and killed, but shot the seven-year-old. Just cases like that, and I guess that's what brought this to the mind of this grandparent. Well, and thanks, Sheriff. This is, this is for you, but Mr. Chairman, when I got the initial email asking me for my interest in this, the, the email <coughs> said verbatim, uh, the point of this gun buyback is to remove firearms from the possession of civilians, period. That's, that's what the email said. And it wasn't something you typed, it was something that like a pass along for You know, to, to remove firearms from the civilian. Now, that's a broad statement. That's a, that's a broad brush to, <clears throat> to paint with. Um, you know, I, I'd have been more inclined to agree with that if, if we had said, look, we're, we're trying to get, we're trying to get criminals. And it seemed like we, we, we attempted to say that. Um, we're, we're trying to get criminals who have stolen guns to bring them in and we're gonna buy them back. Um, I've, I've heard, and it seems like from what I'm hearing the sheriff say and, and, and everybody else say is, is we're trying to get guns off the street because we don't want them to be stolen or we, we, don't, want, we don't want accidents to happen. My kids grew up in a house with guns in every room, handguns, loaded rifles, loaded shotguns, and they know and I know every every kid was going on that. <clears throat> that was the problem I had with the email that, that I got and the, and the response that you got. And, and then the other one was uh, using county funds for this. And uh, tonight's the first I've heard of that. So I guess that's going to be another discussion. Um, thank, you, thank you, Sheriff. Thank you. Thank you. If, if I may just, uh, I would like to ask, I know that the, um, the document did not come from the Office of Sheriff. I know that. Uh, I understand the Second Amendment and we would, wouldn't dare ask citizens to return their gun. And that's one, of the, that's one of the rights of the citizens to bear arms, to protect themselves when government will not protect them. So that would not have gone out from the Office of Sheriff. And one of the things that we do understand, Mr. Mr. Edwards, is that <coughs> We're not believing that, solely believe that criminals are going to bring the guns in. You may get one, but there's a possibility where someone else may have the gun, the criminal stole, that will also pass the gun on. So I think there's a number of approaches that we can look at this, um, but I think that um, the broad spectrum of this uh, is that in the uh, consolation that we removed 100 plus guns out of the hands of individuals who just didn't want them in. And that's, that's all this, this, this is about. Anyone else? <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, I seek a motion, please. Approval. Seek a motion of approval, please. Thank you. I got a, um, a motion by Commissioner Henderson and a second by Commissioner Schultz. Any discussion? Uh, Commissioner uh, Edwards. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, Agenda item 11, discussion, consideration, and participation in the gun buyback program. Another buyback program. Another no, event. This, this is the same one. Oh, the same one. Spend, mm -hmm. spend the county 
Are we okay in the county dollars to be spent that have already been spent? $53,000. We ratifying it today. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any more discussion? All in favor? All opposed? And pass 3 1. Thank you so much. Uh, next on the agenda is item, uh, item number 12. Uh, consideration of an option to repurchase approximately nine nine acres of land. Thank you, Chairman Baines. This transaction is much like um, others that we have seen recently where the IEA has approached us about what we hold in a property. Um, this particular parcel is 9.1265 acres a property is located at the Covington Newton Industrial Park. On October 15th, uh, the Stone Mountain Industrial Park sent a letter to Newton County and the City of Covington notifying the county and the city of its intent to sell certain property located within the Covington Newton Industrial Park. The subject property as described in the letter and other attachments hereto include two tracts of land with tax parcel number C as in Charlie 080045. Again, that is approximately 9.1265 acres. Uh, the property is within an area that is subject to recorded protective covenants, which provide both the county and the city as grantors with a con conditional option to repurchase the property. And we have someone here who has indicated to the county that they want to get Keep in mind that they want out. So um, the property is within the area it's subject to the recorded protective covenants. Uh, and I want to read to you a specific part of the agreement that was in place. In the event the grantee or any successor in interest to a building site of the grantee shall desire to sell all or permitted subdivised portion of a building site that is in, unimproved, then the grantors shall have the prior right and option to purchase that building site or the unimproved subdivided portion thereof. The important thing for the county, um, the, grant, the grantors, the city, probably folks, um, have 30 days from the date of receipt of their letter indicating that we will pass up our right to repurchase that property. That means that the person that's on the other hand who is selling, of course, got to be a buyer too um, they are aware of the interest we hold and um, so far I mean boy did we had about five of these is that fair yeah I think have we had, I'm sure that, we've had five of these right they're very similar I, I think there's been only three but okay. yeah but there have been a number uh, there have been several recently um, and it is as county attorney has stated this it, just, it's the same situation where we had right of first refusal if they were going to sell to a third party. On those, on the other pieces of property, you all waived your right of first refusal, and so then Patello was able to move ahead, sell those properties to the prospective buyers um, for uh, development or um, use. Um, that was a wonderful um, question by Chairman Baines. Um, do you want to say uh, say your question? Yeah. And I'll say it was wonderful. So I want to make sure that we understand that um, it's not an option to play. It's not us placing the option on that land. It's us actually purchasing that land. So I want the board to make sure that that's correct. Okay. I can tell you in these transactions because they were much older. The county spent a small amount of money on many of these, 20, $25,000. Keep me honest, Lloyd, it's something. The property, I think, was originally purchased. One parcel was purchased for about 20000 and the other parcel was purchased for roughly 140000 You have the ability, if you want to exercise it, to purchase that property back at that original sales price. Um, and this was the agreement or the covenant, I guess it would be an agreement 
when these properties were originally sold, the city and the county jointly owned the property. Both of you all were given a right of first refusal um, to repurchase the property should it been sold to a third party. So, and again, the other properties y'all have decided um, or agreed to waive your right uh, to, you know, to do that. Um, but in order for them to get clear title to the property, they ha you have they have to come to you and get you to either exercise the right to purchase or waive the right to purchase. Um, Lord, what is this property next to? Um, I know what it, I know what it, the, the, uh, the, what is it? Let me see if I can, it's been a little while since I looked at the map. Let me refresh my memory, but um, it's over near Harlan Drive. Mm -hmm. It's in that area where the other properties have been. And I believe, I believe that it's adjacent to the rear of the, of the, U.S. corrugated property, but I may be mixing it up with another. So it's, next, it's, it's really close to the uh, the fire station and the yeah, uh, yeah. I believe that. Let me let me just see if I can look at the um, map real close, but um, I believe that's exactly where it is. I want to take a brief recess right quick. Now guys, we'll be right back in, into, um, into our meeting.
Yeah, thanks. You can see below the title. Sorry. Take back over, please. Um, just to kind of summarize, as we made it through uh, most of the minutia of that, um, but <clears throat> we are requesting that the board approve this matter. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you all have. Um, there's probably a dirge of info when I first gave it out, but please, any questions I can clear. Any? I'm sorry, Mr. Kerr. Um, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we did put it up on the screen up here so you can see the track that we're talking about is directly across from General Mills. Any more questions, guys? Uh, Commissioner Edwards. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I, I'm just, I'll ask the, the obvious question. What, what, What's the value for us, Lord? I mean, what, what, what do we, what do we see down the road? What, what do we, what are we losing if we don't buy? It? I, mean, I need, I need somebody to tell me what, what, what's our value here. If, if we don't purchase the property, um, there, there is the possibility that we could, if we repurchase the property and and sell it for whatever today's current value is. In 2000, it was valued at $142,000 for nine acres, which presumably was a pretty uh, a good price. I think the property would be far more valuable today. The negative part of that is, is that obviously the reason that the um, Patello folks or Stone Mountain Industrial Park, which is the people we sold it to, must have a tenant or someone who is interested in purchasing the property and developing the property. So if we exercise the right to buy it, then there's the possibility that we could negotiate with them if we could find out who it was, but there's also the possibility that we would be holding that property for a very long time and then we would have to do the marketing and all the property in, in, order, in, in order to sell it. On the other two occasions where we did not exercise or waived our right. The property was sold at a substantial um, profit um, to the to the third party. But again, uh, part of what we're paying or what's the value there is is that they had somebody that was willing and able to develop the property and the, all of the tangential benefits that you have from industrial development. So. Um, I don't know what they're trying to sell the property for at this point, um, but uh, certainly uh, I feel very comfortable in saying that it's probably worth far more than the 142000 we purchased it or we sold it for in 2000. Um, Lord, and um, I'm on the IDA, so I'm going to ask the question because I think it's a benefit for the IDA. Um, would it be beneficial if the county purchase of land and sold it to the IDA? Well, certainly, I would think so. Then they, um, instead of just, I mean, I think it's, I think it's a big benefit to that. Uh, what's, what's your thoughts? Well, I think that, I, um, again, we could certainly sell the property for more than, if we had a willing buyer, sell it for more than what we paid for it. Um, and that would be a benefit because of the, the the obvious then would be that that would help to build our fund balance and um, you know, we would have um, is, this time, is this time sensitive? I don't my understanding is the city has waived their right to
Commissioner uh, Joe. So, um, just make sure I understand. Um, you know, all the economic development um, training that I have attended encourages counties to make sure that you have property available when you have um, potential uh, economic development um, prospects. Yeah. And it seems to me that we that gives us that edge to make sure that we at least have that through the IDA. Now, if you're telling me that, the, or if you're telling us that the city has waived their right, does that mean that they would not be in agreement with it for the IDA? Or is that something that the IDA would be separate? Because I, I just know that every time I've attended a work uh, training on economic development, one of the things that they tell us is to make sure that you have some property available. And this is in a key area in terms of develop, development. So, you know, I just, I want to make sure that we're not getting rid of something that is a potential that could help us attract a new industry or attract a, a, a prospect that would take us off the table with other communities. I just, I don't want to give that, that card away. Well, understand that the county does not own the property currently. We do not own it. It's owned by Stone Mountain Industrial Park. But we could repurchase it for 142000 and and then turn around and sell it if we had a buyer, assuming maybe the same buyer that, that is working with Stone Mountain Industrial Park. And I'm making some assumptions here because the reason they've approached us is because they want us to waive that right so they can dispose, so they can sell the property. <clears throat> if the city has already waived their right, it's my understanding that they have, if the city's already waived their right, then um, we don't have to waive our right. If, if we want to purchase the property, we could purchase, we could purchase the property. Um, just because the city, the city has said, no, we're not interested in purchasing that property so what we could do I mean that's my understanding of this contract so my last question, I think my last question <coughs> is so if Stone Mountain um, Industrial right. Park is if we believe that they have a buyer that what we're assuming that they have a buyer but we are not privy to any information about that buyer so we have no control over what type of industry that buyer might potentially be is that correct well the property is located um, first of all inside the city limits of Covington so it is subject to whatever their zoning requirements <coughs> are but secondly they're also um, subject to the covenants and restrictions that are in the deed for the land use um, and those covenants and restrictions were put in place by Stone Mountain Industrial Park. So the short answer would be no, but there are several um, checks in there to keep it from being a slaughterhouse or something like that. <laughs> but they, there is no requirement that they, get, they are, that they give us any kind of ability to, uh, to have any say so in whether we, uh, you know, let's just say it's a, uh, a, a manufacturing that we consider is uh, unacceptable for our community. We have, we have no recourse. No, we don't have any on that. What you're controlled, the control is on this property is the same as it is on any other property, which would be your zoning regulations and then private covenants and restrictions, which are enforceable by the the, um, the, the party that sells the property or the, by the association. But if we were to sell it to the IDA, then we would have some control in, in well, how the property develops. 
I think you'd have influence. Yeah, we'd have influence. We'd have. We'd, have, we'd, have we'd have be influence. able to make some. We have influence. Yeah. We'd have influence, but now we have no influence. Yeah. Okay. Commissioner Henderson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, uh, if if we go to IDA way, when will we know something is is going? To, um, will we be in an issue? I'm, a, I'm about to ask a uh, quick question, right quick. I think it's, uh, you know, as a, as a partner, as a community partner uh, with JDA and IDA, I think it's important that we um, at least uh, present this to the IDA and see see if they're interested in it. I think we got 30 days to make a decision. Um, and that allows us two weeks to reach out to the IDA. And um, I can definitely do that um, in a couple of days and see, see if they're interested. And I think it's a way that also that we can, we can put some money back. If they are interested in it, we can put money back in our fund balance. Um, so I, I, would, I would ask someone to uh, table this to our next board meeting. Uh, Commissioner uh, Edward. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, I can support this if we've got a some type of document between us and the IDA that says we buy it and we flip it, and we we've, we've got a we now uh, and make and make something on it, make it you know something. I, I, you, you're talking about building the you're talking about building the, the fund balance, right? So, yeah. um, you know, either I think it's it's. It's a risky assumption to think they've already got a buy. They, they, they may have, but um, I, I did, we just, we don't know that. We we spend that money; it's, it's gone if they don't have a, if we don't have a buyer. We got to market it ourselves. But how do we put something in place between ourselves and the IDA that says we buy it? And the IDA may want us out of it anyway. But well, I will I will remind you that um, IDA got a million dollars, uh, lots of dollars to purchase land, and on our last fly that we. Uh, that way. So, you know, I'm not saying we're going to try to get a million dollars for it, but I'm just saying, uh, I, I think, we, yeah, uh, Commissioner Show. Uh, jump right in there and make a motion that we table this until our next meeting and give the chairman an opportunity to discuss this with the IDA and come back with a, a plan. Yeah. It's been motioned by Commissioner Show that we table this and second by uh, Commissioner uh, Edwards. Any discussion? All in favor? Table. Thank you to our next board meeting. Thank you so much. Next is item number 13. Um, BOC requesting approval of material testing. Uh, Mr. Kerr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is a contract with Matrix Engineering Group. Um, what we are requesting is that this contract be approved um, for an amount not to exceed $100,000. Um, this is a task order contract, and what we have done is negotiated with the um, uh, company to provide unit prices for certain um, uh, activities that they would be conducting. And in this particular instance, it is for engineering and technician uh, type services and all types of laboratory services um, and inspection services that they would perform, particularly on the um, animal control shelter and on the uh, senior services expansion. But this contract also allows us to utilize matrix engineering for other projects that are, will be coming online that we would need materials testing services for, which would be the expansion at the sheriff's office, fire station number eight, um, and any other um, capital project that we that we might have. So we're asking that you approve um, this agreement with Matrix um, for not for uh, not to exceed one hundred thousand dollars. Thank you, sir. Let's take a motion, please. <laughs> So moved as, as stated by the county manager. It's been motioned by Commissioner Henderson and second by Commissioner uh, Schultz. Any discussion? All in favor? Passes 4 0. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next is um, item number 14. Mr. 
Okay, item number 14, public work request and approval of lighting and landscape and maintenance agreement. Um, Mr. Sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Clegg, our transportation engineer, if he would uh, come up and address you. There are several items here under um, public works that uh, I'd like for him to address you all. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Clegg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. This, um, I didn't have the agenda with me. Is this the Magnet Road? Uh, yes, it is. Okay. So um, the DOT has um, proposed to put a roundabout at Magnet Road and uh, Brown Bridge Road. There's a lot of, there have been a lot of uh, uh, crashes in that area and that intersection is pretty dangerous. And um, it's gonna be a single lane. It's about a $3.3 million project. But, just, <clears throat> but as all, <clears throat> excuse me, with all their projects, they require the county to <clears throat> maintain the landscaping inside the the, um, the roundabout and to um, maintain the lighting, provide electricity and replace bulbs and that sort of thing. And uh, they have requested that we um, uh, uh, sign a, a form saying that we're willing to do that. And the actual contract will come later um, once they get the, the um, construction going, they'll, they'll require a formal contract. But this is just a, a agreement that yes, we agree with the project and we're willing to take on the responsibility of the landscaping and the lighting. And Thank Mr. You, sir. Chairman, yes, sir. Um, and this project will not be led until 2022, is, is that in the? I correct? believe that's, that's correct. Thank you. Uh, any questions, Commissioner? If not, I seek a motion, please. Uh, yes. Uh -huh. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. I seek a motion to request approval of lighting and landscaping maintenance agreement for proposed roundabout at the intersection of Brown Bridge Road and Magnet Road. With the not to exceed, what was it? There's, 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 not a not to there's no, sir. Okay. okay. We don't have the actual cost. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Can I get a second, please? <clears throat> It's been motioned by Commissioner Mason and second by Commissioner Schultz. Any discussion? Commissioner Schultz. <clears throat> Hope we make it as pretty as the roundabout and the turn the lake. Yeah. <laughs> Although I know that would cost a lot of money. <laughs> well, right. it's taking care of it that costs a pile of money. I know, I know. <laughs> but it, that, what, whatever we do, it needs to be, it needs to be attractive. Yeah. But Well, the DOT will install the landscaping and we can have some input as, as to what they install. And then after that, we can do whatever. It, uh, once the DOT starts uh, acquiring right away, the, um, the project area become, in a sense, becomes a DOT owned and they'll control that intersection until they get finished with construction. And then they turn it over back over to the county. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I'm I'm looking here on the map, um, Chester, real quick, because I'm I want to know exactly where it is. I think I know where this is. Is this right before you get a, near that bridge on um, Brown Bridge near Snapping Shoals? But it's right there. It's uh, actually Snapping Shoals is shown on the the map here. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, that's all. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else? All in favor? It passes four to zero. Thank you. Thank you. Chester, you're going to be doing the next one as well? Yes. Please, sir. The next item is, um, is on the, um, our MOA with um, the ARC, the Atlanta Regional Commission. We're, uh, they have agreed to fund, um, to use uh, FHWA funds to fund our um, proposed <coughs> transit study. And so, um, 
they are requiring an MOA to be signed by the county and they want a, a deposit, our 20% deposit up front. So I'm um, asking tonight that we go ahead and proceed with that. And um, I'm expecting to get the, uh, a, a consultant on board by January to get the transit study started. Thank you. Commissioner, any questions? Commissioner Schultz? No, I was going to make the motion because I think that the public really wants this. Um, I move for approval of uh, the memorandum of agreement with Atlanta Regional Commission for this transit study funding. And do I need to, uh, for the uh, committee to Yes. I'll get a second. Okay. Uh, there's been a motion by Commissioner Schultz and second by Commissioner um, um, Henderson, I think. Um, any discussion? All in favor? It passes 4 0. Thank you. Just, I think that's next on yours, too. Then, yeah, the next item sounds like a repeat of <coughs> the first one at Magnet Road, but this is a. Uh, um, uh, a roundabout that GDOT is proposing at um, Rocky Plains and uh, 162. And I think. Sure. <laughs> You're right about that. Yeah. So they're just getting started uh, at this point with the concept study. And uh, that, that process, the concept report process, is about six to nine months. And then uh, once they get that done, they'll start <laughs> developing a plan. So it's about six months behind the Magnet Road uh, roundabout. But they need a commitment from the county to um, you know, maintain the, the landscaping and the lighting. And all the other funding, obviously, will be by the uh, Georgia Department of Transportation. I think everybody wants to get a motion next. Um, I think it's in District 1. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Motion to approve the lighting and landscape maintenance agreement. Close roundabout at State Route 162 and Rocky Plains Road. Thank you. It's been motion by Commissioner Edwards and second by Commissioner Mason. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Passes 4-0. Thank you. And 18. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next, five services, Sheriff Office purchase, purchasing, requesting approval of construction project management. Uh, Mr. Kerr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we're requesting that the board approve this contract between um, the county and Ascension Project Management uh, for the management of the Fire Station 8 and the Sheriff's Department expansion, as well as the um, improvements um, needed for their um, uh, fire prevention system. Um, the amount for the fire station is 49000 and the sheriff's department uh, expansion is 56000 <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Uh, commission, any questions? Um, uh, excuse me, Mr. Chairman. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Prine is here tonight in case that you have any questions okay. regarding the, this, this contract. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Please come on up. Thank you for being here tonight, and thank you for leading us in our pledge tonight as well. Oh, that was, a, that was thank very you. nice. Thank you. Thank you for your service to our country as well. Yes, sir. Uh, Commissioner Schultz. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, <coughs> the um, proposed fire station number eight is yes, in District 3, and uh, it is with <coughs> the 2005, no, the 2011 block of dollars. And a lot of the people in the northern part of the county have recently ISO rating, which has declined again. And so they really want this particular fire station built as quickly as possible. When I read the document, it shows that this contract with you is until December of 2020 with a possible extension to December of 2021. And my question for you is, my understanding is that this will, the fire station According to this contract, will be complete by twenty by December twenty twenty. Is that correct? That's that's what we're shooting for. Okay, we, we really need to 
<laughs> yes, ma'am. Really need to right. try and do that as much as possible. Matter of fact, we have a meeting tomorrow morning, so we're 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 if, if we're ready to get started. Um, the first step will be the RFP to get a design and builder on board, and then as quick as we can get that on board, we'll get moving into design and construction. So I really hope we do not have to do the one year extension that we in December of twenty twenty one we can have a grand opening. Yes, ma'am. So that's my charge to you is to please do this. <laughs> right. Well, we, we, we've had good success with animal control and senior services staying on schedule. Um, I'm very mindful of that. And I understand that this project has been kind of uh, out there for a while. So the fire department is very excited <coughs> about getting moving forward. That's why we have our meeting scheduled tomorrow morning to get going. And um, I'll do my very best to make sure we do that and stay well, on schedule. And I, I think that, you know, when you're looking at increase in insurance fees that the residents in that part of the county are paying is it's really critical and it's a it's a safety issue for them. Absolutely. They've been very patient. Yes ma'am. But just uh, I, I want to also um, say that um, we're on this board to really look at our our fire stations and where they're located at because not only in in District 3, but also that was uh, one of the main issues that they had out in District 1 over in the Jamestown area as well. Uh, so guys, you know, that, you know, across the county, people insurance rates is, is going going up. So we want to make sure that this board, we want to make, make close attention to that. We have something to discuss. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was going to ask Chief Connor if he would step okay. up for a second. Um, and tell us uh, and advise you all on the progress of station two and when that will be online uh, as a fully manned station. Yeah, um, we actually saw the increase from the ISO. I mean, the fire department, our ISO rating went from five to a four, but ISO has some changes within the way they grade fire departments. And now the biggest thing is you got to be within five road miles of the fire station. Yeah. And I'm gonna be honest, there's certain parts of the county that might be getting higher ISO insurance premiums that are within five road miles of the fire station because there's no water. Is that district one? Oh, and actually, it's gonna be, some of it's gonna be in district three. As a matter of fact, where Commissioner three, Schultz district lives. Three. Okay. I mean, yeah, okay. she, she lives, probably about three miles from station nine, her subdivision, but because there's no static water supply, hydrants, they're probably being written at tens also. But, and unfortunately that's something we as a county and the fire department can't control because that's the water authority. You know, we don't tell them where to run hydrants and mains and, um, you know, I don't know what they're built out for new water lines would be, but um, there, there's still a lot of places in our community that do not have water. Um, but um, with Station 2, the old Rocky Plains Fire Station on 162 and Par Road, um, we did put in money in our budget this year to remodel that station. It is not uh, set up to accommodate 24-7 operations. Um, we finally getting where we can actually move forward on that. We had to get some soil test um, for the um, um, health department for the septic system before we could uh, get our permits. But uh, talking to Lieutenant Hyde, we got that done. We got the uh, survey done, and he'll be getting with Miss Judy to get the permits so where we can start renovating Station Two. Um, we probably, once we get those permits, the Rocky Plains area, that station should be up six to eight months. Um, and so it'll be staffed 24-7, uh, 365, and that's going to help District 1's uh, down around uh, Lake Jackson, um, that area over there is a very, very big void in there. Um, but because we did that volunteer station deeded that property to the, the county, but it just needs to be brought up to date 
does not have sleeping quarters in it, uh, does not have enough restroom facilities in it. And once we get that done, um, that probably within the next six to eight months, people around Rocky Plains, 162, 212, um, should be able to take advantage of decreased insurance rates because of that big gap will be filled in with a full-time fire station. All right, and uh, Commissioner, we'll pause and meet Mr. Jeff tomorrow at 930 because <clears throat> Commissioner Schultz, we, we understand the, the need out there, um, North Newton, and uh, but I think the project manager on board now will meet tomorrow. And like I say, we just needed him to be approved tonight as the project manager. And we've done set up a meeting in the morning at nine o'clock so we couldn't move forward. We're not going to let the grass grow under our feet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Chief, you and I have talked about the, the Dixie Road corridor that extends over in the district from my district into District 5. And we've even talked about a parcel or two of property. And I would appreciate as much priority, uh, priority as you can place on that because I assure you, I'm now in the insurance business and my customers <coughs> are screaming and my constituents are also screaming. And so I'm getting it from both sides, and it uh, it's cost some of those people right through there quite a bit when that volunteer station closed. So we're, I appreciate any priority you can give to it. Right. Day. I know that uh, once I met with the county manager prior to um, those volunteers just coming up and saying, "Hey, we're not going to operate anymore." Uh, to be honest, if that station had still been there, it would have affected the whole county because it been a volunteer station, they looked at response times. And when that station's dispatched out and that it never went in route because volunteers were working a regular job, instead of our ISO rating going to a four, it could have went up to a six or seven. So it was a double-edged sword on the ISO for station four, but uh, I know that the county manager and I talked, and, and again, um, I know that it's hard to get properties bought, stations built, without a splash. So the only thing is this board would have to make sure it's encompassed in a uh, capital improvement in next year's budget. Thank you so much. Uh, you know what else? Anyone else? Thank you so much. I seek a motion, please. Yes, I'd like to uh, make a motion to approve the project manager services for fire station number eight and the sheriff's law enforcement center expansion and the fire alarm <coughs> system upgrade. Let me get it from Commissioner Edwards. Um, it was a motion by Commissioner Schultz and second by Commissioner Edwards. Uh, any more discussion? All in favor? It passes four to zero. Thank you. Next is the, um, the final reading, um, the alcohol license, Crossroad Shell, 31 Cruel Ro Road, Covington, Georgia, uh, Suleiman, <laughs> Suleiman Hustler, District 4, that was sad, did it, sir? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, 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 have there been any type of violation that, that we can deal with? Have there been any type of violation that we can deal with? Typically, you know, you always both ask that question. Yeah. No, sir, not that I'm aware of. Uh, thank you. Let's make a motion to approve. Second. It's been motion by Commissioner Henderson and second by Commissioner Schultz. Any discussion? All in favor? Pass four zero. The next one is final reading for uh, T and H one one stop um, four. I mean one four six two five Highway thirty six, Covington, Georgia. That is some some yeah. Sa Sana, Mamamian, something like that. District one. Have a stay, better. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You know my license. Not sure. Uh, with that, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, a motion to approve as stated by yourself. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, I'm sorry. It's been motioned by uh, Commissioner Elwood and second by Commissioner Mason. 
Any discussion? All in favor? Pass it four zero. Thank you. Next is citizen comments. This is an opportunity for citizens to get three minutes to come up and uh, make their comments. You may come at this time. Please state your name and your address for the record, please. Good evening, uh, Mary Bruce, 1205 Amber Drive. Uh, Ms. Schultz, thank you for the email you sent us with your recent visit. Appreciate it. It was informative. As we spoke last time, I'm not wearing orange. Would you guys, that was not my color. Uh, we just want to see if you, after the results have come out with the testing, the ETO, that they were high, if you commissioners are going to put this on the agenda for a vote. That's pretty much my question. Pretty simple. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? John Alderman, been working with this ETO. Um, Can you state your address, please? Excuse me, sir? Can you state the address, please? Oh, yeah. Uh, 70 Old Highway, 81 Southeast Oxford, 30054-3207. I've got a lot of concerns about going on. I spoke about it a lot of different places around here, but I think in this one week of time to do the change up and shut down and do their installations and everything. One of the things I've noticed, and I made a promise when I came out of the Navy to the Chief Inspector of Atlanta and the Chief Inspector of DeKalb County, who were in my corner when they I was grandfathered in with full master's license. Um, if I saw anything, I would tell. And he, they put it into me that this is your, like a, you're the only one of the trades that can be go to jail for not doing your work right. Electrical won't, you know, but that's what they pounded into me. I'm concerned about this equipment coming online. And in the trades, you know, if you're going to bring a boiler online in a school or anywhere, you have inspections, you have uh, people checking the equipment out, knowing what's going on outside of the facility. And as far as I know, this equipment is being installed and it uses, I think it uses gas. But is there a, I don't know if there's a permit inspection going on, but I highly recommend that um, the county and the, and the city, or however y'all want to work it out, watch out for this because, um, Anyway, just call it my, my hunch from being in submarines a long time where if you had an idea about something going on, you made sure you looked at it. You made sure the danger tags were hung. You made sure everything was calibrated. Because you know something, when they, they said that valve jammed, and I thought about that for a while, and I said that was a butterfly valve in that pipe. And something fell down the pipe and jammed that valve and kept it open, so it leaked over that period of time. And the question is, why did something fall down that pipe when it's pulling out of that chamber gas? It was solid. Just my viewpoints and my thoughts, and I appreciate y'all doing all that you do to run this county the way you do. Good job. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? <clears throat> Thank you, Commission. Mike Baruccio, 1205 Amber Drive. And I'm here, not because this is my typical forum, I'm here to support my wife and after 31 years of marriage, what's important to her is important to me. And as you may or may not know, she's been here with the orange shirts, um, been to the city council with the orange shirts and we have uh, we just begged and pleaded with all the government bodies about the ETO issue. And at the time, we, we really appreciate the city 
uh, of Covington and the governor's office for taking action that they have taken. They've been before you and to date, I know some of the, the uh, commissioners have, have address this behind closed doors or, or giving us some information, but publicly the commission is silent. And I have to think to myself, why? Is it, in, is it indifference to the public? Is it because you think it's somebody else's problem, the city? Or do you think perhaps that you know, it's, you have to be good stewards and it's an, out of an abundance of caution, you were waiting for the results. Well, I don't believe you're indifferent. You're public servants, you're here for a reason. So I don't think that's the reason. And I don't think you think it's somebody else's problem. The plant, although in Covington, is in Newton County. So by proxy, it becomes your problem. Do you have regulatory um, authority? Perhaps not, but information is power. As the city of Covington has shown by putting those canisters out and they paid for, the information from that single reading got the results we've seen today. Was that an aberrant reading? I don't know. You don't know. No one knows. Have they been admitting this for months, years, undetected? No one knows. The only way we're going to know is to have the city, county, and state come behind this issue and monitor BD like they need to be monitored. They can't be trusted. They said their facility was safe. The single test showed in three communities, the BD parking lot, Covington Mill, and um, what was the third? Settlers Grove. The, read, the preliminary readings, although cursory, showed anywhere from 245 times to 425 times what the EPA recommends for long-term exposure to this chemical. Like I said, was it aberrant? I don't know. And Thank no you. one's gonna know unless Thank we you. put the money behind the testing. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening once again, commissioners. My name is Gladstone Nicholson. I had another thought about coming up here, but having heard the comments from these folks, I remember what the minister said, Reverend McElvain said earlier, he mentioned something to the fact that we tend to take each other for granted. And I know commissioners and the city of Covington and even the state uh, DEP has done much work in oversight of what's been going on with this um, BD and also in Smyrna. Well, I'd like to ask that you just remember what Reverend said that not to take any of us for granted. Definitely not these folks who've been suffering from this um, chemical spill. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Good evening. Good evening. I'm Frederick Johnson. I live at 1036 Highway 162 in Coverton. Uh, a few months ago, it was brought up about making Highway 162 long in the Spring Hill community in honor of Deputy Justin White that was had the accident there. I don't know if anything been done about that or not, but I noticed on the uh, agenda that we're going to get a roundabout down at uh, uh, 162 and Rocket Plain Road, which which is is very very much needed, and it would be nice to have one in front of my house also, uh, but it, but I know that's impossible. I've had uh, on last Tuesday night I was telling the sheriff uh, Saturday that uh, someone had ran off into my yard again, 
make probably about number 18 since I've been out there that have came off that bank. But anyway, I've been begging, trying to get a, a guardrail there uh, for, for the last, last 15 years. But nevertheless, don't look like I'm gonna get it. I'm just gonna have to just continue to plant grass as they tear it up. But what I, what I, what I rose to uh, re just m remind you that uh, in January, we normally do cemeteries clean up. Uh, Martin Luther King's birthday. This afternoon, I went down and looked at a cemetery down on up Camel Road. Um, Camel Road, the first first road to the left. I just remember what 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 it was, but anyway, there's a cemetery back in there. The young lady had came before the uh, border equalization back a while back, and uh, she was telling us about it, and I wanted to check it out. So went by this afternoon about I guess about five o'clock. Looked at it, uh, and the homeowner said that that they would you know, would love to, you know, have it uh, worked on. And I told him we'd try to do the best we could. But nevertheless, he said, what he was going to go ahead and do would probably get some goats and put in there and, you know, let them clean it up, you know, that way. But I told him I wanted to come back and take a look at it and make sure that it wouldn't uh, uh, upset the headstones and so forth. But I just want to, you know, keep the commission in, 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 informed that we're going to need all the help that we can get. Uh, Miss Laura, Laura Burcham and uh, Molly Mayville, they usually get me uh, students from the colleges. And so, but uh, we, we, we'd let, love to have y'all help also. Um, I got a chance to go down and look at the one at uh, Poplar Hill last week. The, I don't know, uh, everything looks good to me on the outside there, but in the back back there, uh, it could use some work. And I feel that uh, there's you. other cemeteries Thank that, you, sir. that need need more, more work done on, on the, the, than that one. Thank so you. Thank, thank you, you much. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Commissioner Henderson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I get a little short, uh, basically two comments. First, my, uh, my heart goes out uh, to, uh, to Ronnie for the passing of his mother-in-law. And I empathize with him on that because I've had uh, close people in my family pass. And so it just really took a toll, brought back memories. But I know that it's if she believed in Jesus Christ, as I do, then I believe in life after death. I believe that's a whole new beginning, and I'm pretty sure she's looking out on us. Secondly, I just want to just make these comments and thank Mr. John publicly for my visit at um, BD Board for going in and explaining to me his expertise. And that's a very smart man right there. <laughs> he knows about everything that has to do with the plan, uh, especially ETO. And I'm reminded of of a friend of mine who wanted to come up here and they, she just talked me down one day. She said, JC, I'm gonna come up and get these commissioner and I'm gonna give you hell. And she came and the meeting was so long, you know what she did? She got up and left. And so when I seen her about a day or two from there, I said, what about? She said, well, I, I want to give y'all hell. She said, but the meeting was too long, so I just went home and went to bed. <laughs> and so um, I think this was our problem with uh, ETO. BD board, the outlast you. Thank you, Ms. Trump. Thank you. Our commission show. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so we have a solid waste authority meeting with the um, Spring Hill community on Thursday night. I believe it was six thirty, is that correct? Yep. Six thirty? Yep. At Good Hope Church and the public is invited and we encourage the public to attend. I would like to say in terms of um, the concerns still related to ETO, I think this is a great opportunity for, with the legislative session coming up in January, this might be a perfect opportunity to work together with our legislators to get some legislation that not only impacts Newton County, but impacts all 
all the communities that are that are experiencing the same problem. And I know that our legislators would be willing to work with you in terms of getting some type of a bill on the floor, but you need to start that now and we can, you know, that's really where this needs to take place because that's where the truth is going to come in. When we, um, I own a restaurant and to serve food to the public, the restaurant is, is regulated. It's regulated through the state. And we don't, I mean, we have to abide by those regulations, but that those are state regulations that apply to that restaurant to be able to safely serve you food. The same thing it takes place with our clean air, um, with our um, clean air permit that comes from the state. And so it, we really need to get that legislation tighter to where, from my opinion, you know, there needs to be, that regulation needs to come down from not where you're self-reporting, where you have someone that comes in and checks. Because it's easy to manipulate the numbers when you're self-reporting. But that has to come from a state regulation. And so I think that it's important that when, when you work it, when you um, are utilizing your energy, that you work with those state legislators to get a bill in through the state. And I would suggest that we, we do it this year. And we can certainly work with you to help get that in front of the state legislators that give us that kind of guidance as well. Uh, Commissioner Mason. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the census is coming. The census is coming. Um, be prepared and get ready. 2020 census is here, close to being here. Um, we have already begun to set up our uh, count committee. We want to make sure that we count as many citizens uh, within our county. Um, if we, for every citizen that we don't count, we lose federal dollars, we lose federal funding, anywhere between $1,400 to $2,300 per person. Um, and so we want to be in a position where we're able to count at least 80% of our citizens, if not more, uh, within our county. Um, we do, uh, Ms. Laura Bertram is our director. She's doing a phenomenal job. Um, I've actually kind of been working with her uh, as well as with a gentleman that's in District 2 by the name of Edward Reed that actually works with Stacey Abrams' uh, first count committee. So that's what he does. So he's joined, uh, gotten on board to help with that complete count. Um, I'm asking if all of our fellow commissioners as well, um, if they could uh, find a representative in your district to help join that count committee. Um, so that we can ensure that we are counting all five areas. There are some, a couple hard to count areas within Newton County. We wanna make sure that we get those areas covered and counted. Uh, and the way that we do that is having people out there knocking on the doors, telling people what's going on. Um, a lot of people are afraid, or there are some people that are afraid of the census. Uh, we wanna let them know that it is safe um, their information is safe. It's not given to anybody. Uh, and just educate everybody on that. Um, in addition to that, um, they are also, I think they have jobs at the Census Committee. So for those, you know, um, that are looking for employment, that's also another opportunity uh, for people to take advantage of that. They can go to 2020census.gov forward slash jobs. Um, to they have 2020 census jobs provide great pay flexible hours weekly pay pay training um, so that's a great opportunity to uh, engage in our workforce uh, development creating jobs uh, for our county and for our community um, our district 2 splash pad is on the way um, we have been yes yes we are excited about it 
and uh, they are doing some currently doing more work. Um, I think they're going to be laying the concrete. Is it this week? I think. Let's see. Okay, yeah, I think they'll be laying concrete. I know they're out there working now. They're doing some more work. So hopefully we have that up and running soon. And so we're excited about um, that. And that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, sir. Mr. Commissioner Edwards. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I wanted to uh, do say one, mention one thing about the, uh, the, uh, the new FFA um, Ag Center. Ag building that um, I, I, I forgot to bring it to the board uh, for, for the comments, but supposedly there was a, uh, I believe it was a horse, some type of horse show uh, a couple of months back, and they had a they had 43 families from out of town, stayed in Newton County hotels, bought uh, food around the square, huh? bought their gas here. Um, did everything right here in Newton County, 43 families. So I think there's some projections I hope we're going to be able to get out from there uh, very soon. They're going to show a payback to the county for their SPLOSS investment. So that and the last thing I have is beware of House Bill 302. I think Nancy, Nancy and I have talked about that. Uh, I believe I mentioned it here last time. House Bill 302 does away with local control in terms of ordinances or uh, zoning regulations puts it at the state level uh accg is is not recommending that it be supported they are not supporting it it's uh it, it can even supersede um overlays as we have them today uh, yeah. and the state the state gets to decide what's built in your town and not the local boards and, and the um city council i think so it will they, supersede yep overlays yeah thank you mr chairman thank you mr curry you have anything no, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Well, listen. Seek a motion that we adjourn. The motion by uh, Commissioner Henderson, second by uh, Commissioner Schultz. All in favor. We are adjourned. Thank you.